Again, good evening po <laughs> sa lahat. So, parang bago ulit, ano? Uh, alam niyo po, last uh, month of the year na ng 2019. Two or three weeks from now, we will welcome 2020. So, madalas po pag nagbabago yung taon, nagre-reflect po tayo sa mga nagdaan months. Ano ba mga nangyari sa atin? What had happened to us this past few months? Nagre-reflect po tayo. For some, marami. For some, there are open doors. May mga, may mga instances in our lives that we move forward. Sometimes the door shut it down. In our lives, when it comes to our career, some of us na-promote. Some of us have a new job. When it comes to our relationship, dati dalawa lang kayo mag Magsama mag-asawa. Ngayon, tatlo na kayo kasi may mga baby na, di ba? <laughs> When it comes to your, uh, to your relationship, there are open doors for you. I believe some of you, no? Hindi natin alam. May instances na may, may time na God has a divine timing for you to forgive. May, may timing na nagkita kayo ng... Tagal mo ng kaaway and you had opportunity. God had the opportunity, gave you the opportunity to have a divine timing, to forgive. Di ba ba? Maraming instances in different aspects of our lives. Um, open doors from God, shut doors from the Lord. There are many, many instances in our lives na may reflect natin. And some of you siguro nag-iisip na, no? Maganda po i-reflect po natin yun eh. Kasi nakikita natin yung paggalaw ng Lord sa buhay natin. Doon sa mga marami-raming naisip, I will let you think of that sa inyong bahay. But tonight, we're going to continue the series. Again, yung uh, series from the Gospel of John. Uh, alam, I, I believe some, some or most of you are aware on this. It was entitled, Do You Really Know Who Jesus Christ Is? It was taken from the Gospel of John. It was written by the Apostle John, the Beloved. And this Gospel ay sinulat niya for to all of us, sa mga believers, to really know kung sino ba si Jesus Christ sa buhay natin. Para higit nating maintindihan kung ano nga ba, sino nga ba si Jesus Christ sa buhay natin. Because all of the passage or of the verses or the, the scripture that John had wrote pertains to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Yung pagiging Messiah niya as the Lord and Savior and the true Son of God. And sabi ko palagi, uh, we had given the opportunity by the Lord to, to know Him. Tonight, we're going to know Him more through His words. Kaya sabi mo sa katabi po, kaya ka nandito ngayon. At sabi nga ni Pastor kanina, hindi aksidente na nandito ka ngayon. Amen? Amen. We have, sabi ko nga, we have given the opportunity by the Lord na makilala siya. Only and only if we will allow ourselves, if we will open ourselves, the door of our hearts to Him. Uh, alam niyo po yung Doors na sinasabi sa ating spiritual na paglalag. It's either uh, an opportunity, it's either a welcoming uh, instances, or it's either um, uh, yung pag-pursue sa Panginoon. So, tonight, the, the title of today's preaching is a challenge, a big challenge to all of us. It's a form of a question and it says, Who is knocking at your door? Sige, pakitanong sa katabi mo. Who is knocking at your door right now? The door of your mind? The door of your heart? The door of your soul? It may be your worry. You're worrying. Tabi mo na yan. San tabi mo muna yan, kapatid? It may be your salary mo hindi pa dumarating. Or it may be 
Naghahanap ka pa rin ng trabaho and you're worrying for what employer, sino mag-i-interview sa'yo, mga inapplyan mo. So, let me uh, challenge you or let me encourage you to set up all your doors right now and be focused. Sabi nga ni Brother Al, let us focus for tonight's preaching, for tonight's words that the Lord is going to reveal tonight. So, our anchor verse will be coming from John 13 verse 27. Uh, let us all read. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. Dito po iikot ang ating, uh, ang, re ang revelation ng Lord. So ito po yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ kay Judas. John wrote this verse during the last supper ni Jesus Christ sa kanyang mga disciples. If you can see, there are persons involved here. Si Jesus Christ, si Judas, at si Satan. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. That means Judas has an open door for Satan to enter into him. And Jesus, and Jesus Christ told, what you are about to do, do quickly. Ito yung madalas na nagiging panuntunan eh. Pagka whenever we have a decision, di ba? Lord, I need your answer. And then pagbuklat mo, what you are about to do, do it quickly. Ah, do it quickly. Pagka naisip mo namang ng utang, Lord, tama po ba to? Tama po ba yung ano, utangan ko? Pagbuklat mo, what you are about to do, do it quickly. So mali-mali po yun, no? Kailangan basahin natin. From the context, yung binasa nating verse. So, sino po nakakilala dito kay Judas? <laughs> Alam niyo po, pag narinig niyo kasing Judas, no, yung, yung, <laughs> yung dating sa atin, laging negative. Like, for example, Thomas, anong nasa isip niyo? Doubter. Juta, si Judas? <laughs> Betrayer. You know, in the Bible, when you read the Bible, when you are reading the Bible, maganda mapakinggan kasi yung mga, yung mga man of God, man and woman of God. When it comes to Abraham, na-strike na, na, agad sa, sa isip nyo. He's a, he's a man of faith, right? How about, uh, <laughs> how about David? Diba? Si David, months after God's own heart. Ang ganda pakinggan, diba? Oh, so, punta tayo sa New Testament, si John, yung apo, nagsulat, di ba? Si John, the beloved, the apostle whom Jesus loved. Si Peter, the rock, talagang matatag eh, no? Even Philip, the evangelist. But when we heard Judas, unang tatatak sa isip natin, no? Betrayer. Betrayor, traitor, at walang gustong ipangalan sa kanilang anak na Judas. Di po ba? Wala. So our scripture will be coming from John 13, of course, uh, verses 18 to 30. But before we read that, let me give you a picture of what, is hap what was happening at that time. So it was the Last Supper. It is uh, Jesus Christ with His disciples, 12 disciples, kasama si Judas. Uh, last dinner nila yon, Kasi they're celebrating the Passover, one of the feasts uh, on that time. And they're celebrating it. Meron silang salo-salo. Sila-sila mismo. And the last meeting, sino yung nandito? Sino yung na na nakaten ng worship service? Uh, last worship service. So, Pas Shane, right? Si Pas Shane, diniscuss niya yung or shinare niya about uh, the humility of Jesus Christ. Doon din, se, uh, parehas na set, setting, parehas na nangyayari. Nasa dinner pa rin sila. Tagal nila kumain, no? Hanggang ngayon. So, it, it, is, it was dinner time, Passover, and Jesus Christ speaking to His disciples. Ito po yung scripture. I am not praying to all of you. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. I'm telling you now, before it happens, so 
Very truly I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send, accepts me. And whoever accepts me, after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Ask him which one he means. Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. So what we, re we read for this scripture, we have several um, learnings that we can uh, get from this scripture. But let us focus on the life of, uh, of the heart of Jesus Christ to his disciples. The heart of Jesus Christ is specifically to Judas. So in verse 18, we can see that I, Jesus Christ told, I'm not referring to all of you. So he excluded Judas. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the passage of the scripture. So that, uh, he, he said this because in the book of Zechariah and in the book of Psalms, it was prophesied that they will, there will be the one who, we, who will betray Jesus Christ. And it was not named, not say Judas yon. So here from the scripture, Jesus Christ is preparing in advance yung mga disciples niya. So na, na picture nyo, nag, uh, they ha they're having a dinner and after washing up the feet, after Jesus washed their feet, they have now the confrontation that, Hello guys, parang hello guys, I need to say this to all of you. So pre-prepare niya in advance yung kanyang mga disciples. There will be somebody who will betray me. Why? Bakit pre-prepare ni Jesus Christ? Because he knew that after this moment, his disciples will ask or will question. Ito, all-knowing God to. Bakit hindi man lang sinabi na may magbubetray pala? Ito, son of God. Diyos talaga ito. Bakit itong traitor na to na si Judas, hindi man lang sinabi sa amin. So, Jesus Christ is preparing his disciples in this scenario. And as we can see from this scenario, there are two things. Dung sa dinner na yun, no? kung buong chapter 13 ang babasahin natin, Jesus Christ is preparing the hearts of his disciples. He is, sabi nga, he was, uh, he had to deal with two things. First of all, yung una, yung selfish, prideful, self-consumed heart ng mga disciples. Kaya itinuro niya washing of the feet. And then this time, sa binasa natin, on what we read, he has to deal with the traitor. He has to deal with Judas. He had to, to unmask this person. He has to reveal ang pagkatao ni Judas. And I believe that this scripture, this story in the Bible have the great purpose, have the great reason why John, the beloved, put this in the Bible or state this in the Bible. So let us look at the life in the life of Judas. Let us look at on the life of Judas. 
Sabi ko nga kanina, kaya ko tinatanong sa inyo si Judas, kung talagang kilala nyo, baka isa sa inyo ganun, di ba? So, let us reflect it into our lives. Si Judas, ano nyo po, mahal siya ng Lord. Mahal din siya. Mahal siya ng Lord. He was picked up by Jesus Christ just like the disciples. Pero nung sabi ko nga, nung binabasa ko yung scripture in the other gospel, some of the disciples, nung tinawag sila, si Peter, si Andrew, come follow me, come follow me. But when it comes to Judas, it was not mentioned na Judas, follow me. <laughs> so, I just wondering and ask why. And I believe uh, Judas is really picked by the Lord. To be one of the team, and Judas love as much as uh, Peter, as much as Matthew. Para parehas ang tingin ng Lord sa kanila. Mahal ng Lord si Judas. In fact, binigyan nga siya ng COC. It is a privilege given by Jesus Christ to Judas. The connection, the opportunity, and the choice. Given to Judas. Opportunity. Why? Why opportunity? Because Judas, alam natin that he was being picked, really, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Kaya sabi mo sa katabi mo, kahit nakaupo ka dyan ngayon, you are being picked by the Lord tonight. Amen? So Judas, si Judas, nung, nung sinabihan siya ng Lord na to be one with the team, he has this Direct connection sa Lord. Hindi na niya kailangan, alam mo si Zacchaeus, hindi na niya kailangan umakit sa puno eh. Para lang maka-access kay Lord eh. He's one of the team. Was one of the team dun sa 12. Directly, clearly, nakikita niya yung miracles na ginawa ng Lord. Clearly, yung opportunity na makita niya. Yung uh, ano ba mga miracles na ginawa ng Lord? Healing of the sick, Feeding of the four, five thousand. Ano pa? Raising up the dead, Lazarus. Yung turn water into wine. Nandun siya. Judas clearly saw all of that. Alam niyo yung message? Yung preaching ni Jesus Christ, yung teaching niya. First hand, narinig niya, naririnig niya. Hindi ka gaya ngayon, di ba? May mga talagang preachers na, oh, before, sa kila, kailangan pang si Paul ang mag-preach. But first hand, nare-receive ni Judas yung preaching, yung teaching ni Jesus Christ. And aside from that, personally, kasama ng Lord, si Judas, he ate with him, he walks with him. Malamang nga, misan, nakikipagkantahan pa sila. So, personally, kasama ng Lord yung Jesus. Ni Judah, si Jesus Christ. So, that is, alam niyo yung opportunity na kasama mo ang Lord. But then, walang nangyari sa buhay ni Judas eh. Walang nangyari. Sabi nga, he started out the same way he ended. Walang pagbabago. Yung opportunity na binigay sa kanya. What are those opportunity to heal the sick? Opportunity to to share the word of God, to preach the word of God. 'Di ba? Hinayun ni Lord Jesus yung mga disciples niya. Opportunity to trample down serpent or to cast out demons. Judas had given the opportunity by Jesus Christ to do all of that. But then, he missed that opportunity. What else? The choice. The choice that Jesus Christ had gave, given to, Jesus, to Judas. The choice to choose him. Because I believe Jesus Christ really knows and trusted Judas na magbabago siya eh. But still, the, ano pa rin? Yung choices pa rin ni Judas, yung sinunod niya. The choice that he should repent or he should be sorry for our sin. Pero hindi pa rin nakita ni, Jud ni Judas yung mga instances o pagkakataon na binigay ng Lord na ito. So with this, 
sa life ni Judas, we have a great lessons that we can learn from him. Sabi, I, as I was saying, sabi ko nga, yung, yung, yung buhay ni Judas is a great reminder sa atin, warning sa atin, and even the Lord, through the life of Judas, ino-offer niya yung victory of choosing him. The victory of choosing him. There are times in our life na namimiss natin. May mga pagkakataon that we had regret. We had a regret because we miss the things that God had offered to us. Come to think of it, what, of it, what are those? What are those? Because of some of the things that really pursuing kung ano yung gusto natin instead of what the Lord wants for us. And sometimes, or most of the times, yung regret na hindi na natin maibalik. This what had happened to Judas. His life went from this great privilege being with God into great destruction. So it's a great lesson for all of us. That's why we need, that's why we need to guard the door of our life. Ito po yung nawala sa life ni Judas. He was not able to guard his heart. He was not able to guard his heart because from the beginning, John mentioned that, that Judas is a thief. Judas is a thief. Kaya nga, uh, even though he's a thief, the Lord Jesus Christ still entrusted him. Nagi, di ba naging treasurer pa siya? Eh, if, if you come to think of it, si Matthew, treasurer, ano din, tax collector siya. But then still, Judas was chosen. Ito po yung nawala kay Judas. He was being deceived. He was being deceived by his love for money. Isa lang yan in our real life. Love for money is one of the reasons why we are being deceived in this world. Maraming mga instances that because of money, uh, most of the people, most of the, the person involved when it comes to money talagang nag-aaway. And it is being a warning to all of us that we should not put an open door. An open door to the enemy, to Satan. Because the enemy, sabi nga, the enemy, ano yung tactics ng enemy? Kill and destroy. Come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that was what happened to Judas. We must be aware from the pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Last of the eyes, maybe that's the reason why money, no? Yung nas nasilaw si, G si Judas. And of course, the motives of his heart. The motives of his heart is really not of the Lord. Kasi si Judas po, kaya siya sumama kaya sa disciples ni Jesus Christ. Because of his wrong motives. The, uh, he's expecting Jesus Christ to be the leader. To be the leader of the yung magre-revolt na mag-spare sa kanila from Romans uh, slavery. So pumunta siya doon, akala niya ma mangyayaring plano niya na si Jesus Christ ang mag uh, mag-spare uh, sa kanila against Romans um ito sa pamumuno ng mga Romano before. But ang plano ng Lord iba eh. Ang plano ng Lord iba. So that's why tonight I believe God is encouraging us to guard our heart. To be aware of the tactics of the enemy. To close the door for Satan and open the heart to God. Eh, papaano po yun, Sister Jen? Papaano, papaano uh, natin, individually, that we can really open the door of our hearts to the Lord? Let me share to you this acrostic. Judas. <laughs> Sige nga, hulaan niyo kung ano yung acrostic. Of course, door. 
How do we guard the door of our heart and allow Jesus Christ to come and have residence in us? Nakikita nyo ba, if we are just aware on the things that's happening in us, sa paligid natin, alam niyo po yung, yung, yung pagdating ng Lord is really, uh, I am, ako ha, personally, I really felt that the Lord is coming soon and He's preparing us. He's preparing us individually sa kanyang pagdating. And one of His, uh, one of His, uh, one of, He wanted for us is yung heart natin is being right with God and it's fully surrendered to God. That's why this scripture, kahit na ilang beses ko siyang binasa or ilang beses ako nag-reflect, I believe that's one of the message of God na gusto niya makasama tayo niya eh. Those who have a pure heart, those who can see the, the Lord. So He wanted us to have this pure heart. And it will, only, it will only start when we open ourselves, the door of our heart, to Him. So with this acrostic, start with door. Stands, this stands for discernment from the Lord. You know, pag sinabi kasi nating door, it's open or closed, di ba? So, hindi, pagdating sa Panginoon, we need to be open. And when it comes to the enemy, we need always to shut down, to shut off all the doors from the enemy. That's why we need discernment. Discernment, not from anyone else, but from the Lord. Pag sinabi nating discernment, Ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng discernment? It is not just distinguishing from being uh, this right or wrong or this uh, being perfect of, or no error. Discernment is more than that. Discernment um, is distinguishing a thing that is from good to better or better to best. Biblically speaking, it is thinking about the things of God thinking about what is really the heart and the mind of God and we can see that in the Bible how can we see how can we, we really know God if we don't even read the Bible I can, how can we really know Him if we don't really open the Bible it is not just a book I, always not, I remember Pastor um, Sheila told Whenever you open the Bible, you are meeting the Lord. You are communicating Him. Hindi lang sa prayer. You are meeting with the Lord. Kinakausap pa na Lord. Only, only if we are really uh, interested or have the excitement na Lord, kakausapin niyo ako. Pero pagbabasahin lang natin for the sort of obligation, <laughs> malamang di tayo kakausapin ng Lord. So discernment, we can really get or we can really have the discernment from the Lord if we really know His words. Because most of our lives are how many percent? 90 percent decisions, di ba? Pagising nga ng maga, eh, babangon ba ako? Eh, Ibibukal ko ba isang mata ko? Eh, hindi. Decision na yun eh. Diba? Papatin ko ba yung alarm clock o hindi? Decision na yun eh. But for the, somehow in our walk in Christ, major decision should always be anchored sa Lord. Because our own decisions, if it is just anchored sa ating sarili, on our own feelings, on our own thoughts, malamang lagi tayong naliligaw. Malamang lagi tayong papunta sa maling landas. That's why the word of God is hindi yan la, ano siya, hindi yan lang word eh. It is the truth. It is the truth and it has no it has no error. For some maybe you have still doubt, but it's not a doubt. I believe it's just a seeking heart to know him more. So, i continue yon. I continue nyo yon. There's no other way. There's no other way to ask for the discernment only through the Bible. Dahil ang personal ang relasyon natin sa Panginoon. Hindi pwedeng ipagba, 
magbasa. O oh, Sister Bing, gusto ko malaman kung anong plan ng Lord. Pwede ba basahin mo sa akin yung Roma, ganito, ganyan? Hindi eh. It is you and the Lord. It should be personal. We have, we have to, to read the Word of God with an expectant heart. So discernment from the Lord. We need that. We need that. That's why we really need. Why? So that we may not, we, we, we may not be tossed by the, wa by the waves in this world. What are those waves? Those struggles? Those, those uh, wrong decisions? Sabi ni Paul, kailangan natin that we, we should uh, think for whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Napaka, napaka ganda pong isipin na ang Word of God, yung po yung magta-transform ng ating isipan. Because what we, what we think will always manifest uh, will go into our hearts and manifest through our actions. So if in our, in our walk with God, if we really desire to have the discernment from God, we, we can, because we are children of God. I remember one of the testimony nung isang kapatira, nung may naw pa, nung may naw pa, sabi niya nag-struggle daw siya palagi. Yung pala, kaya siya nag-struggle palagi. Because he cannot hear clearly from the Lord. Why? Why he cannot clearly hear from the Lord? Because he cannot, he didn't even read the Word of God. Why he, did, he didn't even have the word, uh, read the Word of God? Because he has no desire, no desire to know God. Bakit wala siyang desire to know God? Because he have a hardened heart. Why he have uh, he has this hardened heart? Because he was led by the wrong motives. And why he has led by the wrong motives? Because of the selfish desire, selfish motives. Palaging tayo, palagi palagi sarili natin. And there are times that we think that we don't really needs God, need God. So that is the hardest thing, and it will always lead to betrayal. It will always, always lead to betrayal. So let us soak ourselves into the Word of God. Open heart to God. Matthew 5, verse uh, to 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see, see God. Al, ito po yung everybody wants and desire to see God, di ba po? And uh, si Judas po, taking in the passage, si Judas po, hindi po isang araw, nagising at binitray lang si Jesus Christ. It takes three years, more than three years for him, nakasama si Jesus Christ. But then, he still betrayed him, betrayed Jesus, uh, si Jesus Christ. Why? Because of his wrong motives. What is inside his heart? Yung wrong motives. Ano yung wrong motives niya? It is the love of money because he is a thief. The wrong motives why he joined in the in the group. Yung tuwon dun sa rebellion, di ba? So he's not with the group. So with these wrong motives, God wants us to learn that we should empty ourselves with all of these wrong motives when it comes to following Jesus Christ. Wrong motives. Kapatid, ano bang motivation natin? Bakit tayo nagsuserve sa Lord? Bakit tayo nag-church? Bakit tayo nagmi-ministry? Ano bang motivation natin para ba mapansin? So what is the motivation? What is the motivation of our serving or following Jesus Christ? Jesus wants us to open our heart to God. Yung being surrendered to Him. How do we know if you are really surrendered? If we are really surrendered? Sige nga, paano mo malalaman natin kung fully surrendered tayo sa Panginoon? If we are excited, if we are excited of the things of God, 
if we are excited to live a holy lives. There are many there are times that na isip natin, Lord, eto na naman, tukso na naman, Lord. But still God wants us to open our heart to him. Eh. Be transparent to him. Lord, ni ko kaya na na naman. Pero yung tukso dapat natin layuan, no? 'Di ba? Resist takbuhan. The Lord wants us just to open up just our Abba Father, 'di ba? Tay, para tayong susubong sa Panginoon. Tay, ano naman, naway na naman ako sa opisina. Parang ganun eh. Tay, nagchichismisa na naman sila. But God really wants just to open our heart to Him. Be surrendered. Ano man yung nasa puso natin ngayon, God will, will surely hear all those kung ano man yung nanakit natin, kung ano man yung nagpapasaya sa atin, kung ano man yung nagpapabigat sa atin. Because our transparency to God will always open our intimacy to Him. And it will close for the open door sa kaaway. Why? Because we confess our sin. When we confess our sins, it will close and shut down the enemy. It will really close. And wala nang uh, puwang ang kaaway. Tandaan natin, hindi pwedeng magsabay ang katuwiran sa kasalanan. Hindi pwedeng magsabay ang commitment sa saan? Ang commitment sa compromise life. So, alam nga naman sa puso natin, sa buhay natin, pag nandito tayo, we're so close to God. Holing holy, di ba? Dito pala. Di dito. Holing holy. Millimeter lang ang layo ng Lord. But when it, we go out, when we in the office, million million layo ng Lord. Napakalayo ng Lord. Nagtatransform na pala tayo. Iba na, na naman ang pagkatao natin. We are living a doubled life. From the life of Judas, napakaraming matututunan natin. But, Always, it will turn into destruction. So, better to open our heart to God. Be transparent to Him. Alam ng Lord, alam ni Judas, na alam ng Lord yung pagtataksil niya eh, pagbibitray sa kanya eh. But then, Lord, pwede naman siya, Lord, alam ko, alam nyo na magbibitray ako. Uh, ba? Diba? I, I believe the Lord taught him. What's the true repentance? Being sorry sa, sa Panginoon. But then, he has a hardened heart. That's why. He didn't even open his heart to God. But he just follow what? His motives. Diba? So what else? Letter uh, O again. <laughs> Obedience is the key. <laughs> Obedience is the key. Because ang ang door kasi useless yan kung laging nakasara. Kung wala, kung hindi yan mabuksan. So in our walk with God, we need uh, to have uh, an obedience. Because obedience is not, it's not it, it will not save us. Obedience will not save us. It is salvation. Our, our relationship to God. Our true relationship to God Our faith to God will lead us to obedience. Obedience is the result of our true relationship sa Panginoon. So pagka nag-o-obey tayo sa Panginoon, we really open the door. We really allow God to control our lives. I believe some of us here ay nahihirapan sa pag-obey. But we don't really know what will be the next instruction of God. If sa first command pa lang niya, eh hindi na natin may obey Like for example, for tithing, sabi nila it's the easiest. Bakit maraming nahihirapan sa tithing? It's the easiest command. But the Lord always challenges us. Ta- challenging na, sabi niya, test me in this. Test me in this. Si- ikaw ba naman ng Lord mang magcha-challenge ka pa ng ganun kung hindi totoo yung mga sasabi, mga gagawin mo? 
So with first obedience, hindi mo alam yung mga susunod pa na gagawin ng Lord. The outcome of the outcome of our obedience to God. Lagi yung may result when it comes to the Lord. Hindi hindi po bulag, hindi po bingi, hindi po maikse ang kamay ng Lord when it comes to those people to those person who obey Amen. him so better to obey rather than rather than to be to go into the destruction what just like what happened to Judas when it comes to obedience one of the thing that i saw is the greatest obedience that the lord had done on the cross that the lord had done when he obeyed his father kahit na humiliating yung mangyayari sa kanya, he still obeyed the Lord. He still obeyed the Father. Not for himself, but for all of us. That was when he died on the cro- cross sa bawat isa sa atin. Kaya ka naririto ngayon, kapatid. Kaya ka naririto ngayon. Kaya na-enjoy natin ang salvation because of the great obedience of the Lord Jesus. Amen? And lastly, ito na. Letter, reject Satan and receive restoration in Jesus Christ. Ano ba, there's no longer na may experience natin na walang katulad when we, when we receive the restoration of Jesus Christ only if we will choose to reject Satan. These are the things that is being offered to us by by the world. Alam natin kung kanino yung world, di ba? Ito ay, ay para kay Satan. But we, if we reject Satan, rejection kasi hindi lang yan parang, che, hindi ganun. Che, tatakbuhan mo. Resist, tatakbuhan mo. Hindi yung anjo na nga, ah, kayang-kaya ko yan. Ah, tulungan naman ako ni Lord. Andiyan na nga yung, yung tukso. Ah, hindi. Magpipray lang ako, mawawala yan. Ding! Hindi yun eh, hindi ganun eh. Sabi dito, reject Satan. Rejection is you are running away from it. Running away from the works of Satan. Receive restoration from Jesus Christ. Because we are all sinners. Lahat tayo nagkakamali. May mga fault tayo. May mga iniquities tayo. But still, the hope that Jesus Christ is giving to all of us is abundant. And it's always available. And that is the blessing that we don't receive. That is the grace. That is the mercy of the Lord. Kaya pa, He's so patient sa atin ngayon eh. Hanggang ngayon, He's so patient. Kung... If we will just imagine, Jesus Christ can even come back anytime. But He's still so patient because He always want us to be changed. Yung mag- magkaroon pa tayo ng opportunity na magbago hanggat may oras pa, hanggat may time pa. Kasi pag hindi nga natin alam if uh, bukas o mamaya, We're still alive, di po ba? So, ito yung na ni Judas, yung makita yung pagmamahal ng Lord sa grasya at awa. Ito naman yung nakita ni Peter. He repented. He, Peter felt sorry from his sin. But Judas missed the grace of God that is offered by Jesus Christ. Ito po yung na ni Judas. That, that's why, ang kinalabasan, ang nangyari kay Judas, nagpakamatay po siya. Because of the great guilt. Because, na hindi niya nakita that there's still hope. There's still forgiveness. This is the opportunity of that Jesus Christ is giving to all of us. The opportunity na magbago mag-repent, mag, uh, mag-ask ng forgiveness. And there's always new life when it comes to Jesus. Amen? So, I believe uh, God had 
open our hearts and mind to the truth of today's gospel that is to open the door of our hearts to him and close our hearts to the works of satan let me share to you that in one point of my life actually from my previous experience and uh unahan ko na kayo i'm not proud of it there were things in my life before that really opens the door for Satan to control me. Well, the door of sin, the sin of lies, the sin of immorality, the sin of adultery, the sin of selfishness. But I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. I was really condemned to hell. But by the grace of God, but by the blood of Jesus, by faith through Him, God closes all, door, all those doors in my life. Only by the surrendered heart. Only by the surrendered life. Kapatid, is, the Lord is challenging you tonight. Whatever it is now that is open in your heart that hinders you, to come to God for you to live a holy lives allow the Lord to close it all because he is powerful enough to do those things hindi ganito ang power niya ganito ang power niya he laid down his life on the cross and we as we put our faith to him as we fully surrendered our life to Him, we are secured in Him even into eternity. I assure you, I assure to all of you, surrender your life to God. Your salvation is secured to Him. Walang pagsisisi yan, kapatid. So let me close with this. Without the sincere motives to walk on the Lord's straight path, we will experience much unrest and continual longing for things which are outside of God's will. Kapatid, wala kang kapayapaan yan. We all get to align our thoughts in our mind, our motives in our heart towards God's open door of salvation. Kapatid, habang may panahon pa, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we must be ever watchful that we are following God's will for our lives and not our own selfish will. Always guard our hearts. Make sure that the door of our heart and mind are closed from the ways of Satan, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And lastly, the Lord always allows us to open the door of our hearts to Him. For us to continually receive His discernment, His holiness, His humility, forgiveness, restoration. And these are freely flowing, offered to us by God. Do not miss this opportunity. The Holy Spirit is really willing to empower us, to help us. So was our lives to be changed. And the challenge for tonight is, again, Jesus Christ stands before you and gently knocking and reaching out to you with those nail-pierced hands of love. Do not keep the door shut, but rather open the door of your heart only to Him. Now, ask this to yourselves. Will you allow Him to enter into your heart? Or will you really allow Him to change your life? And this is the warning, kapatid. Do not be like Judas. Amen. Our memory verse, which I pray that for all of us to be put in our heart. Sabi ng Lord, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. And the tip comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Do not allow this, my friend. I came, Jesus said, I came that they may have life. We may have life 
and have it abundantly. Kapatid, this is a free-flowing gift sa atin. Live a life abundantly. Choose to open the door of our hearts only to Jesus Christ. Amen.